So I made a tier list today on my opinion on Greninja stages and I put Lilac Cruz above Smashville. And there were a few reasons for that, but let me pull up this list of reasons that Rebs sent to me at Rebsdom talking about why Lilac deserves to be above Smashville. So the very first thing that he said is moves refusing to work because of Lilac's layout. layout. That's not true. A lot of moves do still reach. Like up till on these side platforms always reaches. Whereas on Smashville, up till will never reach. The only problem is with this middle platform where up till won't reach, but up smash will. So I'll show this with Banjo. Up till, up till, up till. This is all connecting on Lilat because up tilt goes through these platforms here. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. It, it's character specific, but against certain characters like Ryu, it can connect. But up smash should be able to connect on these side platforms very consistently. You see, because if up tilt can connect, up smash definitely can. Unless you're Link or Ganon, because fuck those guys. The next point is having zero bonkable sites for recovery. That's not true. You see this part here? How did I just head bonk? Greninja is able to head bonk under the stage of Lilat. This is all bonkable here. You can bonk from here. Look, I'm going straight up and I still bonk off of the jet. See? This stage is very much bonkable, which means that if you look at my position and how far away I am from the stage, this is a massive increase into my recovery. Let me go frame by frame to show you guys how far we're able to bonk on here. I'm out here, right? Look at where I bonked from. Look at how far away ledge is. And I'm still able to grab it. And also look at my hurt box. That's all frames where I'm invincible. And because of my hurt box shift, I'm very low to the stage. I'm not even past ledge. And now I gain invincibility once I do end up in a position. But let me see if I can still show it off. So see, normally I do get hit by yo-yo if I go up to ledge. See? But if I head bonk, I'm able to actually get around it. There you go. Look. Head bonk, I'm already grabbing ledge here. That's frame one of my two frame. How the fuck is Ness supposed to hit me down here? So if I turn on my invincibility, his yo-yo is whiffing on the first frame of my two frame. This is Greninja's ledge grab, by the way. Greninja is grabbing ledge in this position. That's frame two, and now I get my invincibility and Ness isn't able to hit me on ledge. It can work against a lot of two framing options, and that's Yo-Yo, which reaches below ledge. So head bonking on Lilat is an actual thing, and it's very underused because the position that Greninja is able to grab ledge from decreases the likelihood that he's going to be hit by two framing options drastically. Because if you look at it, again, look at the position I'm head bonking from, a fucking jet where you can't see the ledge at all, and now... I'm grabbing ledge from way over here. Can I zoom in? Yeah. I'm grabbing ledge from way over here. This is a ledge grab frame, by the way. Boom. Invincible. I already grabbed ledge, but... Up. Grabbing ledge. Grabbing ledge. Invincible. So head bonking on Lila is insanely good. All right, the next point. Platforms are positioned to help the opponent land easier and avoid dash attack. This isn't actually true. If you go on a stage, again, this is for the sake of comparison with Smashville. If you go on Smashville, half of the stage, the opponent is able to land and Greninja doesn't have very good platform pressure in general. If he commits to something like a forward air, whenever the opponent's in free fall or landing, they can choose to do a mix up where they land on the platform or just drop through it. And you have to be ready to cover both of those options. If you commit to the top platform, especially on um, Smashville, where Up Smash doesn't connect, you're not able to cover that option. But on Lilat, Up Smash works. Up Smash works and covers those options on these platforms. If they drop through, 
you're able to charge up smash and get the sour spot to connect and launch them off stage. Not to mention these side platforms here. Up tilt actually works on the stage. This will always connect through the platform, which means that if they're doing the mix up of landing on the platform or not landing, up tilt covers both of those options because on the ground, it's able to hit Ness. On the platform, it's also able to hit Ness, which is why it's so good. Um, yes, that's something I wanted to show out actually. So you are able to short hop onto these top platforms, but the way you do it is by going to this jet here. You see this jet where it is on the ground? It's slightly elevated compared to the rest of the stage. So if you see Greninja walking, you can kind of see him hump up a bit and then go back down. Can you guys see that? But if you're on this jet, you are able to short hop onto these platforms. So look at that. And there's quite a bit of potential here. You are able to do rising forward air and back air on these platforms. So you can see I'm able to confirm off of a rising forward air against opponents that are on platforms. And whenever you forward air normally from a short hop, you're not able to confirm off of that. But on Lilat, you're able to get down tilt strings going. And same thing for back air. Depending on their DI, you're in a much better position to actually follow up for an edge guard. Same thing with Rising Nair compared to forward air. But you can see that you're able to confirm off of Rising Aerials on this stage. So whenever you platform pressure, this is super good because you're not just like, you know, touching their shield once and giving them the option to jump away while you're in the end lag of neutral air and going down to the ground. You're able to actually go up there and pressure them from shield. So let me go ahead and show this. So normally, I'm not able to pressure this because if I do something like a Nair and he jumps away, right? Now I have to worry about his landing option. But on Lilat, we're right here ready to catch his option. Whereas normally, you have to chase it. The next point is about jab locking on slants. Well, yes, jab locking on slants isn't very doable on this stage. The question is, if I know he's gonna miss the tech, why am I jab locking him? Just fucking punish him, right? And if you get out of the mindset of having to go for jab locks 24 seven, you have so many more options. You have landing forward air, landing nair, down air. You have so many options avoiding jab locking nests. And also dash forward down tilt. This covers pretty much three of their tech options, which are no tech, tech in place, and tech row away without jab locking. And from there, you're able to follow up consistently. See, it doesn't lock Ness here. Shuriken deleted by slants. Water Shuriken does not get deleted by slants nearly as much as you'd think it would be. So the way to do this on this side, when you see Greninja's tongue, lined up with a shadow, right? You see how there's a shadow in between the platform and uh, the actual ledge here? Water Shuriken will always go over. The only Water Shuriken that isn't able to do so is a full charge Shuriken because of how big the hitbox is. But before that, Water Shuriken will always go right over the slant. And the thing about slants is that slants are actually insanely, insanely helpful for Greninja. There are certain projectiles that Greninja just barely isn't able to crouch under, and one of them is Hadouken. So against Hadou, Greninja just barely isn't able to crouch under this. But with Slants, look at how like very little I am on Slants, and I'm still able to crouch under this. I'm barely on the Slant, by the way. And I'm able to low profile this move, and then actually get in for a punish during its end lag. Slants are very, very helpful for Greninja. This is also the case with other moves such as Sephiroth's F-Tilt. And it makes it so that the F-Tilt literally cannot hit you just by standing here. Down angled can connect, but I've seen it with. And furthermore, forward air and such already has very tight timing from Sephiroth to connect on Greninja. By standing on a slant, you can make it so that it literally cannot connect. So, standing on the stage normally, right? Barely able to hit me. If you see that spark, 
That's an indicator that he's literally a pixel away from doing so. And this is very much frame perfect. But if I stand on slants, I'm just standing here. Like, I'm not even crouching at this point. And he's not able to hit me. There you go, he finally hit me, but that was because of my idle animation. So Greninja is able to absolutely abuse slants. And look at that, that's a very free punish for just swinging at me. This is the case for Fox Laser, Wolf Laser, um, Robins, L Thunder, a lot of projectiles. And also this isn't to mention the potential that Greninja has with these slope cancels on Lilat. So when you're edge guarding an opponent, you know, you might be wanting to cover an option there are a ton of setups for doing this, but you see this jet here? Greninja is able to cancel off of this and essentially toss out a Hydro Pump to threaten Ledge Jump. If the opponent chooses Ledge Jump and they run into this, this is a position where Greninja is able to easily follow up because they've been trajected into the air. So there are a lot of setups for this, like wave landing back from this platform and just dropping through, um, you know, initial dash from Teeter. And you can even go across the stage by doing this and you land with next to no end leg. There's a way to do it off of a wave line, but I haven't quite gotten the timing down for that. But as you can see, I'm able to land and then down tilt and act out of Hydro Pump immediately. A really cool thing about this is that you're able to get back your out. It's not the most practical setup at all, but you are able to do it. So you can get back your one combos and then go from there. Uh, do I think ledge cancels are easier? I think there are definitely like consistent ledge cancels. I don't know that they're easier per se though. Um, here's an easy one you can do though, just ledge route or ledge jump shuriken into that L angle with hydro pump. And you'll get that ledge cancel every time. And from there, if they chase you, you can, you know, land with a forward air, land with a neutral air, and then cover their option. Uh, what other talking points did he give me? Slants in general. Slants in general are so fucking good for Greninja, guys. Like, don't sleep on these. Um, here's something else. You guys know the no tumble combos from down throw? Slants actually make this work on even more characters. There are certain characters that you don't want to take to Lilac, by the way, and Cloud is one of them, though. He does way better on this stage than we do. So Cloud is set to jump out of down throw, and you see how he actually gets the double jump animation, right? From here, I'm not really able to connect dash attack because he's able to jump out. But if we do this down throw on slants, right? Because we're doing it from a lower elevation, he's forced to hit the ground first. And then from there, dash attack. That's guaranteed because of the landing leg that he takes. So we can put him into shield. Because of the landing leg he takes from being popped up by down throw, down throw into dash attack is guaranteed. And this is the case for a lot of characters. Also, uh, while I'm at it, I haven't labbed this out entirely. I was in the Bowser Discord asking about what moves hit Greninja on ledge hang. And they told me that their up B is able to hit more characters on slants than not. And this is the reason why. Whenever you use tilts on slants, you see how Greninja is kind of standing at an angle? Down tilt is able to hit way lower than normal. So if we go frame by frame and look at this hitbox, look at the position where down tilt is reaching, right? It's actually going underneath the ledge. But normally down tilt doesn't reach that low, as you can see. If on slants, it reaches way the fuck down there. So this can catch even more characters at ledge. Does this work on Yoshi's? Yes, down tilt does work on Yoshi's. And the interesting thing about Yoshi's is that that stage never reads shuriken unless it's a full shuriken. So you can be as far in the corner as you want and toss out shurikens all day long. In the corner? I rolled in the corner, by the way. I'm like as far here as I can. Anything that's not a full shuriken goes over the slant. And if they approach you, you can decide to actually toss out full shuriken and then get combos from there. If they approach you, Full shuriken, dash attack, forward air. You have all of these options. And this is also the case for Lila. You might even be able to like zero to death here. Wait. Something like that. Dash attack two frames are a thing, 
but from what I've noticed on slants, dash attack doesn't actually reach down. So if you look at dash attack, it doesn't reach down, it's still horizontal. So dash attack two frames aren't nearly as much of a thing on slants, but down tilt definitely is. Cause that's quite the angle that it's able to hit at. If I were to do a regular shadow sneak, right? For an edge guard, depending on the position, this puts me in a position to be punished after the shadow sneak comes out, you know? Because I'm floating. But with slants, you're able to input a shadow sneak right at the edge and you're actually able to fall with it, and you're in a much less likely position to be, you know, hit by a reversal or any aerial that they might toss out. And plus on Yoshi's, you have this wall to work with. So you're a lot safer going for this, you know, punish whenever they're off stage. Also, you can charge a full Shadow Sneak from here and go off stage from there because of the slants. This all works on Lilat, by the way. That's my discussion on why I think Lilat is better than Smashville. We can go to Smashville, so I can show some of my points as well. But I don't think that Smashville is nearly as good of a stage for Greninja compared to Lilat. Yes, tech chases are really good on, you know, um, Smashville because of the top platform. So from here, you're able to get a lot of tech chases up, up throw and such. But when it comes to like actually killing your opponent, this stage sucks, bro. <laughs> Down tilt up smash at 100, right? No platform? This will kill. With a platform? Oh boy. Up smash does not, like, connect on any character. Or actually, let me show this. I, I stand corrected. Do not be afraid to take Yoshi to smash all. Yoshi's hurtbox is actually, like, insanely bad. But yeah. This will connect on Yoshi, and even furthermore, if Yoshi is just standing here, up smash. Feel very, very, very free to take Yoshi to the Smash Bros, guys. I've even seen like Yoshi get hit by up smash on Kalos before, so do not be afraid to take Yoshi to Smash Bros. Yoshi's best stages, from what I know, are Battlefield and uh, Yoshi Story. So if you want the small space of Yoshi's story without the triplats, smash all. Up smash does work on the stage and the stage is like a very solid counter pick. Shadow Sneak can work on these platforms, but it's a little bit tricky to do so. The thing about Shadow Sneak is that it doesn't necessarily kill on these platforms before up smash because we're doing it from center stage. Oh, and also if I'm not mistaken, the top plast zone on Lila is the same as on FD which means that your up air juggles with those triplats are gonna kill very, very early compared to on Battlefield or Smashville especially because Smashville has one of the highest ceilings out of any stage. All right, so Tech Chases with Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak is able to cover a ton of options, but as you can see, it's not necessarily killing. And also there are positions where they're able to roll behind the Shadow Sneak. So this platform's a little bit wide for it, but it is still possible. Instead, what you can do is a Nair tech chase. And depending on the hitbox of Nair, you can follow up from there. Don't be afraid to take Yoshi to Smash Bowl. Very, very good stage. When when playing against Yoshi specifically, I should say. Let me test out um, a Smash on Yoshi on Kalos because I think it might be a thing. I've definitely seen Tarik do this before. But Yoshi's hurtbox is like insanely bad when he's hit by up smash. He like moves into the move. It might be something to do with like his giant nose, but who knows? Aha, uh -huh, who knows? Yeah. Yoshi specifically, don't be afraid of, you know, platform up smashes. It works on Game & Watch? Let's test it out. <laughs> More giant nose characters in Smash. Giant nose DLC. Yeah. Very cool. Game & Watch and Yoshi, every stage. Don't be afraid to take those characters to Smash Bros. Anyone else? You want to be kind of iffy about it. But uh, yeah, that I think that's what I'm going to do for this stream. Thank you, Dark Lord. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Rayman DLC, big nose. We'll see, man. We'll see.